There is no foundation without Christ. That is what the scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11. For there is no other foundation that any man can lay except that which has been laid. And that is Christ Jesus. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Jesus Christ. So may Jesus is my foundation. Can you say it one more time? We had a testimony a little while ago among several others. Somebody said, I gave my life to Jesus last year and ever since then things have turned around for my good. Jesus Christ is the sure foundation and that is to say that until you contact Christ your life will remain in crisis life is in jeopardy until Christ comes into it the disciples of Jesus someday were on the high sea and there was a great storm and there was fear but as soon as Jesus stepped into the boat trouble stepped out of the boat until Jesus steps into your life troubles don't step out of your life give Jesus a chance if you want to have a chance Jesus is our foundation. No other foundation can any man lay other than that which is laid. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. Also in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20, the scripture reveals to us that Jesus Christ is our chief cornerstone. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20. And the Bible says we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Say with me, Jesus is my chief cornerstone. Say it again with confidence if you have him in your life. If you are not born again, you are not entitled to making that statement. As a matter of fact, if you make it and the devil hears you, he will deal with you after this service. He will come and meet you in the corner and say, Did you say it? anything they said? Who authorized you to say it? That's why it's important by the time we are closing this service tonight, everyone yet to be born again must make a conscious decision to surrender his or her life to him. In every building, the cornerstone is very crucial. And that's why in every destiny, giving Jesus a chance is non-optional. Giving Jesus a chance is non-optional for a destiny to thrive. Destiny will end as a trash without Jesus. Destiny will be crashed without Jesus. Destiny will remain in jeopardy without Jesus. Sure foundation. That's what Jesus came to give to us. Now, quickly before we begin to extol the virtues of salvation, because that's where we are coming to, I'll be showing to you 12 virtues of salvation. And that is what happens to you when you give your life to Jesus. What is foundation? I'd like to quickly define foundation in two ways number one foundation is platform for raising a thing either physical building or otherwise foundation can be defined as platform for raising a thing that is nothing is ever raised without foundation 
thing that is raised without a foundation will soon be erased. No matter how beautiful it looks. Anything that is raised without a foundation is short-lived. It cannot last. It takes foundation to last. It takes foundation to endure. Anything raised without foundation is only for a while. You know the reason why? Life is exposed to storms. Whether you like it or not, storms will come your way. The wind does not require permission from anyone or anything to blow. And because of this, against the day of the wind, against the day of storm, we have a duty and a responsibility to ourselves to ensure that we have a good and sure foundation. So foundation can be defined, like I said, as platform for raising a thing, for raising a person, for raising a people. And number two, foundation can simply mean beginning. A beginning, 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 beginning. Anything that does not have a beginning cannot have an end. Anything that does not have a beginning cannot come into existence. And that is to say, without Jesus in your life, you don't have a beginning. Jesus is described as the author and the finisher of our faith. He is described as the beginner of our lives. In Genesis chapter 1, we are aware that God began. He began. The reason why this world is existing today is because God began it. Anything that has no beginning does not have a future. Destiny has no future without Jesus being the foundation. Why? He is detested and tried material. He had tasted death for us so he can redeem us from death. He had been beaten with stripes so that we can live sickness free. He had been tested and proven to be the unfailing, unchanging changer. Without Jesus, you don't have a beginning. Say with me again, sure foundation. The word sure there gives us an understanding that there is unsure foundation. There are, there are many unsure foundations. Jesus Christ is the sure foundation. He is the solid, strong, and unshaken. To be sure means to be unshaken, to be solid, to be strong. So when you connect to Jesus, you become a strong, solid, unshaking human being. Jesus comes into your life to turn you into an unshaking person in him. I am sure that as we go through this convention, this theme shall become a reality in your own life. And all who believe it, say a loud Amen. Our link to Jesus, the sure foundation is salvation. If Jesus is our foundation, how do we connect him to enjoy such foundation? Say with me, salvation. I didn't hear you very well. Salvation is your link to Jesus, the sure foundation. Now, what is salvation? Salvation is a process 
of partaking the nature of Christ. Salvation is the process of partaking of Jesus' nature. That is to say, when you are saved, you are connected totally, absolutely, to the nature of Christ. In 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 4, the Bible says we are partakers of his divine nature. Now listen to this. Invi salvation is invitation to partake of Christ's nature. So when you are told to come and give your Christ to Jesus, you are simply told to come and partake of the life and the nature of Jesus. Salvation is invitation to partake of the nature of Christ. I'd like to repeat that again. Salvation is invitation to partake of the life of Jesus. That's why the Bible says, if a man be in Christ, he becomes a new creature. And I mean to say, all things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Shout hallelujah. When you are born again, you are not made to be like Christ. You are made to be as Christ. You are not just a picture, but you are a duplicate of Christ. Salvation is giving you opportunity to duplicate Christ inside you. You live as Christ when you are born again. Because he himself came into you to dissolve his life into you. Just like when you take a pill, it goes inside you and dissolves. In the same way when you receive Christ into your heart, he comes in there and dissolves his life into you. Shout hallelujah. I hope somebody is getting something tonight. He's a new creature. Say me, I'm a new creature. And that means all things are passed away. Sickness passed away. Failure passed away. Hardship passed away. Suffering passed away. Oppression passed away. All things are passed away. He has left the old school. He's now in a new school where there is success, where there is prosperity, where there is abundance, where there is peace, where there is joy. Serve me, I'm no longer running the old course. I am now in a new school. For you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That's the way the Bible describes you. And he said he, he brought you out of darkness into his marvelous life. He did that that he may make you a show to your world. Shout hallelujah. Via salvation, God took you to the factory and he changed the parts that used to be in you and put into you brand new parts. And thereafter brought you into the showroom to show you to the world. That's why the Bible says he has called you to show you forth. To show Christianity is for show. When you are born again, you become the show. If you are not born again, you go into hiding. Hear this very well. It's already happening. And more of it will be happening. That when you are not born again, you will be so ashamed. Because glory is the inheritance of those who give their life to Jesus Christ. Salvation is invitation to partake of Christ's nature. To partake in another way means to take your part. So when God called you, to be born again he called you to take your part in Christ you are born again to take your part
part in Christ. You are born again to take your part in Christ. And everything in Christ is made available to you. He was never sick. So when you give your life to him, you become a candidate of divine health. Shout hallelujah. Did you hear somebody says testimony? Tonight, he said, when I gave my life to Jesus, sickness left my body. Do you know that I'm talking to you right now? Anyone with any form of sickness in his or her body is disappearing because of salvation in the name of Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 6 verse 9, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 9, Paul the apostle speaking there, hear what he said. He said, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you. When you are born again, better things come your way. So new birth is better life. Say with me, new birth is better life. He said, we are persuaded of better things of you. And things that accompany salvation. Things that comes with salvation. Things that are loaded into salvation. Now listen to this. Every blessing of God anchors on salvation. Every blessing of God anchors on salvation. Just as any new baby born into a family is entitled to all the blessings of the family. Please hear me very well. When a baby is born, And the father is excited, a rich man. He has a Cadillac or Rolls Royce. And with joy, he drives the vehicle to the hospital to go and pick his new baby. Even though this baby is not as conscious, just newly coming to the world, they carry him, everybody is celebrating the baby, and put him in the Rolls Royce. And the child gets so excited and pee in the Rolls Royce. Does that get the father angry? Because that is the toast of the family. Being born into that family entitles the child to ride in the Rolls Royce. He didn't pay any time for it. So when you are born again, you are entitled to the blessing of God. It is salvation that entitles you to the blessing. If you are not born again, you may be close to the family, yet you are not entitled to the family to the blessing. That's why in every family, when the family meeting is to hold, and your friend is with you in the house, what do you do? Excuse me, please wait for us. We want to have a family meeting want to have a family. He's your very close friend. But he's not entitled to sit down among family members. That's why you may be very churchy. You may like fellowship of the brethren so much. You like the way we dance. You like the way we sing. You are enjoying everything. But you are not a member of the family. You may still be seated here. But when it is time to distribute the blessing, they check your forehead. Do you have the name? You don't have it, they skip you. And you are wondering why blessings are skipping you every day. There are things that accompany salvation. That is to say, salvation is the key to blessings. Salvation is the gateway to blessing. If you are not born again, you will suffer again. born again is being redeemed being born again is what entitles you to enjoy the blessings that accompany salvation shout hallelujah if you are born again say me I'm born again and say it with confidence somebody what are the things that happens to you when you are connected to Christ, the cornerstone by your salvation, I showed you the 12 virtues of salvation. Number one, 
When you are born again, you have what we call a lively hope. 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 What is hope? Hope is anticipation. We live in a very hopeless world. What is hope? Hope is what keeps your head above the waters of life. Without hope, you will drown. There are too many things around the world that brings about discouragement. What is hope? Hope is spiritual encouragement. That is to say, when you are born again, no matter the trouble, something inside you tell you you can make it. Something inside you tell you there is a future for you. Something inside you tells you there is a bright day coming. That is hope. It does not come ordinary. It cannot be fabricated. It can only be given to you when you give your life to Jesus. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3 He said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto what? A lively hope. A lively hope. So it means lively hope. I didn't hear you very well. Say it one more time. So it means I have a lively hope. I have said that hope means spiritual encouragement. Hope means assurance of tomorrow. That it does not matter what's happening around you. Something springs up inside you. You wake up in the morning. You can't tell what is moving you. It is the gift of salvation that we call lively hope. In Hebrews chapter 6, we understand also Hebrews chapter 6 from verses 18 to 20. He said that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation. Hope also means consolation. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon their hope. Salvation helps you to lay hold of. Now, in upon on the high sea when there is danger there is what they call the lifeline they throw it to you so that you can hold to it to come out of the arena of the waters salvation is a lifeline that is thrown to you if you've had any incidents on the sea before what you are looking for is hope hope you are looking for light through the tunnel and as soon as you sight light as soon as you sight the rope, something rises up on your inside. That's what salvation does. When you are born again, something springs up on your inside, telling you that tomorrow is very good. Shout hallelujah. That's why when you are born again, people look at you as a strange being. They are discouraged. They can't tell why you are so encouraged. It, is not, it, is, it cannot be fabricated. It is the gift of God. Shout hallelujah. It makes you despise all the attacks of the enemy. It beats hands down every discouragement around you. I'd like you to check your life. If you don't have this, perhaps you are not born again. Don't assume salvation. It cannot be assumed. It can only be received. Romans chapter 5. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, verse 1. By whom also we have access by faith through the faith where we will stand, through the hope where we stand, and the hope of glory. That is what the Bible describes as the hope of glory. The hope of glory. The hope of glory. And the Bible says that Christ is that hope of glory. Christ is our hope of glory. Christ is our hope of glory. Shout hallelujah. I thought I had you shout a hopeful hallelujah. Hallelujah. 